What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. We are back with some Spanish League Guardians. Now this comes with Carlos, Ferrer and Alonso, which are the boosters in this pack. We're going to get into them in a second and we will have all the trading guides and the builds at the end of the video and hopefully I'll chapter this as well, but it'll probably be like the last two minutes of the video. So Carlos, Alonso and Ferrer. Both of these guys, Carlos and Ferrer, are definitely kind of end game. If you kind of know that they're going to have slight limitations, a couple of weaknesses, and you play them in the right system. I feel like the game at the moment now, there's very little aerial ball being played. Most top players that are in Division 2 or upwards, if you are in there, Division 3, 2, 1, any with the ranking, if you're going up for ranking, you're trying to get up the ranking, um, I do kind of feel like that Ferrer and Carlos are usable, very usable, because the game, nobody really plays in the air, man. Everyone is just playing like, you know, tiki-taka, uh, you know, ping-pong passing, mixed in with a bit of possession, mixed in with a bit of dribbling, mixed in with double touch, mixed in with that. If you are playing anywhere above that uh, or below that, if you're playing division four or five or whatever, any of these players would be an advantage to you if you are spinning. Again, do I recommend this pack? It's very hard to say. Alonso is probably a big risk here to take as well. And the rest of the players in the pack, there's none of them really that usable. But in saying that, like I do feel like there is a couple of nice options in here, including Akuna Matata from the Lion King. This guy is a really, really good attacking fullback. He's uh, kind of an he's kind of an advantage to have if you like to swing balls in. Really good lofted pass off the rip. I'll show you the build at the end of the video. Nice pinpoint cross and outside curler and fighting spirit. I would like probably to throw on track back on him if I'm playing him as a left mid. But obviously now with the position trainers as well, you can make kind of hybrid players. So. Uh, he's not a bad option, he can only play on the left, he's got a load of other positions that he can play, and he is a utility player if you're looking for something like that. It's a fairly okay option to have, I actually like him, I had his player of the week. This guy also is a bit of a, an interesting one as well, he's a nice height, he's not too tall that you don't need him to be clumsy, so he's got good base speed and acceleration, and he also has excellent defensive stats and skills straight off the rip. Area of superiority, interception and blocker, and fighting spirit. And of course, all you need to do is give him maybe acrobatic clearance and heading and slight tackle and man marking if you want a bit of investment into him. But he's an okay player. I feel like now, with the where the game is gone, Les, honestly, after playing about 30 hours of V3.4 and the new update, I feel like the game is just, it's so skewed for aggressive players, man. And aggression, the aggression and tackling stat on defensive players is just absolutely insane. The speed isn't as important now, so a lot of these players will do really well for you. You also have this guy here, Rodriguez, the Argentinian. He is a really good destroyer. He nearly goes to max out in all his defensive stats with 35 levels. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant skills. He's got sliding tackle, blocker, interception, man market, and of course, soul control, which is always nice as well. Very slick on the ball. I played with him a good bit, so he's a nice option. The rest of the players, lads, apart from Cancelo and Militao. Militao is just your average build-up CB. 25 levels, it's not a bad option. As I said, I'll show you the builds in a second. I'm not going to make this video too long because all eyes will be on the legends and whether they're worth it or not. Now, I'm going to be bringing out a video which will explain my player builds very soon. I'm hoping to have it out this week. If you are struggling with the same players from V3.3 before to V3.4, if players were beasting for you in V3.3 and they haven't been beasting for you in V3.4, I think it's it's cause of a couple of things that I'm going to cover in this video. And I'm going to show you examples. I'm going to give you my talking points. I have a lot of research. As I said, I have played 30 hours, literally 30 hours of gameplay. And it's mostly been against Division 2 or Division 1 opponents. So it's against guys that are really good at the game, really sweaty at the game, or else really, really kind of a mixture of both, you know, that are just really good players and know how to play. And I feel like some of my stuff that I've kind of covered in that video will explain a little bit more on this. But Xabi Alonso, to get him out of the gap, right? Get him out of the, the gap straight off. Unwavering form. Looks pretty boss in game. He's got a pass and plus two to his booster. I'm actually going to hide my webcam here because I'm going to show you the builds in a second and talk through them in just a second. Soul control, one touch pass, low lofted pass, way to pass and true passing. I'm going to get a lot of these questions, right? Throughout the next couple of videos that I do in streams. Does the skills matter more than the stats? Personally speaking, in V3.4, I'm going to say yes. I think that the stats have changed so much that some stats don't even mean that much anymore. We'll go over that as well. But we will show you the build for Alonso here in a second. But he's the weaker of the three. Ferrer actually goes ridiculously high with the speed and the defending as well. Tackling and aggression are the only two stats you really need for a destroyer. And he's going to have 85 speed straight off the rip. Now, I know he's short compared to other CBs that are destroyers, such as Aldair Maldini. 
But I do feel that he is a really, really good uh, option to have if you're used to playing on the ground defense. Now, a lot of people don't actually look at Ferrer and see him as a, a viable option because of his height and because he's missing one or two things. But he pretty much has everything, man, apart from aerial superiority and heading. That Like, he literally has everything on the ground. And this guy reminds me of Cardoba or Cannavaro. And if you play 10 matches, just look at how many goals you're conceding from either corners, headers, crosses, or knockdowns from a target man. I would say it's probably 1 out of 50. Honestly, I'd say it's probably like about 1 out of 50, if 1 out of 40 maybe. Nobody plays aerially anymore because there's no benefit to doing it, especially when you go up the ranks. Everybody knows at that level, they have the knowledge to know that stunning crosses and stuff only works the odd time. You know, so we'll show you that in the video I'm doing as well. Very good player though. I really like this card. And then of course we have Carlos, who is probably my favorite left back of all time in the Pez series and now the eFootball series. Ridiculous speed, ridiculous stamina, acceleration and kicking power off the rip. I'll give you a piece of advice, lads. If a player isn't impressing you, from the off, from level one, without anything, and even without his booster, if the stats aren't catching your eye, I would say just sit on the player for a little bit and actually see how he's operating at level one before you put XP in. Now, if you're going deep for Carlos, you will want him as part of your starting 11 more often than not. Like, that's the only reason I'd go deep for a player now so close to eFootball 2025. I know we're a couple of months away, but all the players that you've probably gained up until now, unless you're a newcomer, you probably have somebody that's going to do an option or do a do a job similar to Carlos. So we're going to go over to eFootball DB. I'm actually going to show you all the builds of all the players. We're going to start and go through these very, very quickly. So you have the builds there as well. On most of my builds going forward, I'm obviously going to be taking in the manager and the the manager booster and the booster of the players these don't have any boosters but the manager boost essentially just add on two to any stat if not three for pep we're going to just show you a couple of these here you've got Militao's going to have all very very high defensive stats including max aggression and 85 speed you're going to have Zhao Cancelo here as well who is going to be a beast you've got 86 speed 90 acceleration and of course 90 stamina and you also have a couple of different players here that you would probably want to go for again, uh, such as Arno Martinez. These guys are not really upper tier, but they can be a bit of fun to play with. So you can pause the video and look at the build. The build is always down here on the left side. So for example, it's four into dribbling, three into dex, six into lower body, one into area strength, and then 15 into defending. That goes the same for this guy, Zubaldia. This guy is an absolute monster defensively and speed. He's kind of mid tier, is kind of a little bit limited by his... Um, by his levels you have Gaston Rodriguez as well who is down as an absolute defensive unit not great speed good physical contact but the rest of his stats are unbelievable there's Akuna Matata and this guy has got really good stats as well you also have <coughs> Goulamon um, this guy is a beast as well defender DMF very similar to Rodriguez here both of them are similar but it's all about the legends I suppose if you are spinning for this pack there is the Alonso build 0510839 I feel like this Alonso card, lads, is a bit of a bust. Honestly, passing at the moment is kind of all over the place um, unless you play the simple pass. And you can play the simple pass with any player in the game. So I think Alonso's player skills do hype him up a little bit. But still, you could buy Kevin De Bruyne and have a very similar option as a deep line kind of like, you know, orchestrator style player. We also have Albert Ferrer, as we said there. This is his stats without any booster, without an any manager. If these stats are impressing you... He's even going to be better in-game. But don't pay too much attention to what the manager booster is giving you. This is an insane card with really good stamina, speed, and defense stats. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And then, of course, Roberto Carlos to round us off with this video for our best build of him. Now, I have played probably about four or 500 games with Carlos uh, across every edition of his card that they've released so far. He's one of my favorite players. He always gets his spot. I'm playing him as a left midfielder now for swinging balls in and tracking back. And his aggression, his speed, his overall movement, he's so slick on the ball. Not the best passer with the way the passing is at the moment. But I definitely do really like this card still. But that is it for me, lads. I didn't spin for these um, because I already have Carlos. I already have Fer, and I don't think I'd use any of the rest of the players. But let me know about G. Let me know if he actually spun for these. Let me know if you think it's a good pack or a bad pack. Um, and I will be back very, very soon. I'll talk to you then.